until I get my revenge. Tony Bradley, train hard, mate. Stay injury free, stay focused. Let's have a real tear up. Come to the ring. It's no run around this time. Come in. It's Harry's son. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> What's the way for? Yeah. What are we waiting for? When we had the first press conference for the rematch, I talked about the first time I hoped we would win. This time, we believe we're going to win him. And now, sitting here, I know we're going to win this fight. And I just don't know how much David Hay wants it. This guy, on another level. Rough, tough, not the prettiest, not the sexiest. <laughs> but <laughs> he can fight like... He's supposed to build me up, not knock me down. He's <laughs> supposed to feel good. He can, he can fight. And he wants this so bad. He forced me to box bad, which is a skill in its own right. So you have to give Tony, Be Tony Belly for credit. You know, you know, did he get under my skin? Maybe, maybe I... I... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Tony did a great job last time round. He got under my skin, he wound me up, he got me fuming. And, uh, this time round, it's like, hey, Tony, you got me last time. You're not going to get me this time. But now all of a sudden, it's this humble approach and then Maz... It's the real. You humbled me. me. You humbled me, Tony. You took my best and you dished out yours and the towel came yeah, flying in because you were the better man. You call me the haymaker for a reason because I'm chucking haymakers. <laughs> I threw those. I was, I was missing last yeah. time. You did the lights last yeah. time, not me. Exactly. I'm not taking the bait, son. I'm not taking it. I took it last bait. time. I, I allowed you to do it last time. I don't time. need you to I take the bait. I can't be bothered. I genuinely. don't need you to take the bait. I'm going to go to the gym right here and I'm going to train. Same as me. In great shape. The same as you did last time, David. The same as maybe, you done last time. You changed, you changed brilliantly you last time. Into my psyche. You, whip, you, you whipped it. your top off, you look fantastic. You're going to whip your top off, you're going to look fantastic again. It absolutely infuriates him that I'm, I talk over him. It infuriates him that I'm even in the same room as him. You haven't been humbled. You know you can't stand the sight of me. I love you, Tony You Bellion. don't. I love you. You don't. I do. You <laughs> absolutely I love you. I love you. Yeah. I love Thank you. Beard. It's I not do. new, though. I don't know. I've got a way of getting under people's skin. Uh, and... And people will think that I do it on purpose. I don't. I just, you know what? You know what hates people more than anything? Just telling them the truth. I have never changed my opinion of you once. It's always been the same. Great. You're a brilliant fighter. My, my opinion Why has changed. My opinion Why? has changed. Why? You beat me. March 4th, you beat me. You had your hand raised at the end of the night. You beat me. So, obviously, my, my opinion, if I, if I wouldn't have changed my opinion, I'd be an idiot. You know, if you could go pro at winding people up, you'd be five-time Olympic champion, because he's got a very sort of unique uh, way of, you know, irritating. His, his, the whole tone of his voice and his mannerisms and the way he speaks, he's really good at winding people up. So, But this time around, he hasn't wound me up. What he says is just irrelevant. Good luck, Tony. No punches now. Don't want to mess me watch up. Good taste. Well, no, you should know. You paid for it. Of course I did. Times change. Um, this time round, I decided to focus um, all of my training in London for the simple reason I, I don't think I've ever lost whilst training in London before. The last fight with Tony Bellew, um, I trained in Miami, I lost that fight. And similarly, my fight before uh, Vladimir Klitschko was in Miami, I lost that one. So when I've been away from my London base, I've, uh, I've lost. <laughs> Tony, son, keep training hard. Keep running up the Mersey. Yeah, keep that sweatsuit on. It's a hard night you're in for, mate, hard night. He portrayed himself to be an idiot and he looked absolutely ridiculous come fight night. Now, a lot of people schedule in different types of sessions, you know, um, but I, just, I schedule in fun, schedule in what makes me happy. Jet skiing makes me happy. You know, watching the sunrise makes me happy. So these things are all scheduled into my uh, training program. I've uh, not had as much um, 
fun as I had in Miami. In Miami, was going jet skiing and going on day trips and stuff, which was fun, but I was putting the hard work in. He's still the same arrogant fool that he's always been. I mean, you just look at the way he conducts himself. Uh, he's doing great lately, the way he's doing it, but it's just an act. Happiness is something I've wanted to really incorporate into this training camp because the negativity and the dark energy that surrounds the whole camp of uh, Tony Bellew, his uh, Penfold coach, his whole joke of a team. This is negative, dark, gloomy, in Rotherham. Ugh. You know, so we've just tried to go as far away from that as possible. I definitely had a, a dark energy again. Even everybody around me was like, even after fight, people were like, Dave, you, you weren't quite right before that fight. Everybody, like people, people close to me, saying we had to kind of keep our distance because I was just, I summoned some unhealthy energy that didn't work. So I've uh, put that in a box and buried it. A leopard never changed its spots. Man. Nice. Come on, when you've put this on, why have you put that on for? <laughs> are you allowed to be a boxer when you're bigger? No. And you don't want to be, do you? Why do you want to be a wrestler? Batter people. No, you don't batter people, you just wrestle. No punching, OK? We've got a deal, haven't we? <laughs> Before the last fight, there was three weeks, there was five weeks to go. Yeah. And she said, I need you to go back to Sheffield because my camp was taking place in Liverpool. And that's never happened since I've been with Caldon. I've been with Dave five years. So to get me to write off on it, she said, go back to Sheffield and I'll let you choose the wedding song. <laughs> so the song Probably we do the dance to. So I went back to Sheffield and we shook on it. And now she's trying to renegade on the deal. No, you see the fingers. I went back to Sheffield, love, you've lost the bet. So I'm, I'm going to choose the oh. wedding song, but that's the only thing I'm he's doing not, for the whole wedding. Remember am. this conversation, you know. I am. He's not. I am, that's definitely He's not. No, he wants I, a lovely dovey one, a lovely and it's not happened. She, Rachel, was scared to, to stand still and dance in front of people in front of anyone. It's no. going to happen, that's what we're doing. 16 years I've been with Anne. It got to after the hay fight, and she's like, right now you've won what you wanted to win, what you said you'd win. Why are you still doing it? And, and I tell her I'm still doing it because I've still got points to prove, not just to myself, but to everybody else. And she says to me, everyone else isn't important. What do you think of? David here. Uh, I don't know him, so I can't comment. Um, from what I heard what he said on the last press conference, that was, I'm glad I wasn't there. But that's probably the reason why I don't go to fights anymore, isn't it? Rachel um, can't just bite a lip. I've learned to bite No, but lip. It, do you know what it is? Instead of just sitting there and just go, oh, come on, and the way I used to, I can't do that anymore. She won't beat the O2, that's the main thing. Yeah, that's it. I, I can't, can I even sneak in? <laughs> I couldn't. I, it's not fair. It's hard, yeah. It's not fair. And we've been through enough this year before you, do, before you put any more emotional stress on the family, so she just doesn't need to be there. There's absolutely no point. Nothing to be gained by Rach being there. No. I don't need her to do anything. Uh, I'll just have to go in there and, and win. It's been the worst. Year in my life without a shadow, without the worst time. When you go through what me and my family have been through, me, me missus losing a brother was just the hardest thing I've ever had to go through, really. I've been with Rachel for 16 years. I've known Ashley since I was 11 years old, so it's just, it's heartbreaking. I used to love spending time with him. I'm a mad Liverpool fan. Uh, I'm a mad Everton fan. The, the laughs and the banter we'd have all the time about football. It breaks me heart and it's sad. It's a sad, sad situation. Will he be your motivation to win this fight? Mm -hmm. uh. Go ahead. You signed for the rematch after, mm. just after he'd passed away. Do you think that you, that was a, the right decision to do that at that time? I, I couldn't go back on it. I'd said I'd agree to the rematch. I know I'm a man of my word and, and I can't give it. I shouldn't, I'd be, when I look back, no. Because I know for a fact if I'd have got in the ring on December the 17th, I'd have lost. But the weight of, of when you're walking in the gym and there's 
it's just me and him. There's no conversation apart from do that, need to do that, this shot, that shot, blah, blah. There's no conversation. And that affected me as well. I worried for him. You know, it, it was weird because his performance was really, really good. It was, it was sharp, it was good, everything. But then my worry is on fight night, does the emotion all come out? Oh, I don't worry too much about the time away from the ring because I've done a camp before. If, if I'd gone from last March all the way to now with no boxing camp, I'd be really worried. But I'd done 10 weeks in that camp, the December camp. I'd had sparring partners over, I was performing well. My mind wasn't in the right place, it was in the worst place ever. But me physically, I was all there. And ultimately, I gave David Hay my word. He went through with the first fight. He's pulled out of this one. Even though he's pulled out, I'll give him an opportunity. So it's all on David now. We were devastated, but um, do you know what? Fights fall through and fights get cancelled and postponed and things like that. Fighters get injuries, it, it happens. But what he had to go through for that training camp, um, that's what made it so hard. That's what made it such a bitter, bitter thing to take. You know, I always make sure that I work with people who I like. When you spend working with a coach, you spend so much time with that person. You have to like being in their presence. Shane McGuigan, you know, we worked together for probably just over a year. We, we sat down after the belly fight, sort of reviewed the fight. We both thought, yeah, OK. You know, we think it's, it's gone as far as it can go. No hard feelings. You know, he's got uh, George Groves to the world since that point. You know, he's, he's gone from strength to strength. <laughs> Feels like I've got a nice balance here. Everyone's on the same vibe. You know, Salas is happy working with myself and the, the fighters that we've got here. Yes, sir. It's in the moment, don't break the moment, yo. Coming from originally from Guantanamo, Cuba, I am 61 year old. In total, right now, I, I have a 20 world champion. I've actually worked with Salas about three or four years ago. He, w he was based in Vegas, so, so he couldn't come to London. But I learned a lot from him. And I always thought to myself, you know, if uh, schedules could work out, if it was physically yeah. possible to bring him over to the UK, um, would, be sort of, would be great. David Hayes is like a, a classic car, classic Rolls Royce, let me put that way. Ah! Oh, baby. Ah! David's power is something really uh, special. When I take him punch from David Hay, I feel like an earthquake in all my body, you know? Hey, uh! yeah. Many people think he is done. Still, he has things to do in bots. You've got the most color coordinated coach ever. Look at that. <laughs> the Louboutins. <laughs> Louis Bouton, Louis Boutin. <laughs> He's my El Santin. <laughs> oh! No! 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 Yeah, keep yeah, flowing, keep flowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep flowing. Eh? No, no, no. When your head is here. No, no, no! Yes, sir. When I go to the gym and work with him, it feels like being at school. It really feels like being at school. And, you know, I'm absorbing it, I'm learning, and. I feel, you know, I've, I've truly improved. You know, Salas will say, you know, work on this, uh, step this way, or punch this, because uh, Bellu does this usually. How are you feeling? Very good. Huh. No, when your, your head is getting there, yeah. you should. Yes. Huh. He's worked with uh, Linares, Rigondo, to Felix Savon, to Casamayor, so some of the most skilled fighters, you know, of my generation. From Venezuela, Jorge Linares. When we step out from the dressing room to the ring, wow, 20,000 fans shouting, and the, the vibe is so amazing, you know? It's just like, it's, wow! Jorge Linares, he, he was a great the fight. He won of the amazing fight of Jorge Linares, his turning point for the uh, uh, higher level. And um, it was great, really great. 
Uh, May 5th, uh, I will tell you, is no, I don't like to be a big mouse or anything, but for sure, we go for win. Uh, if you watched the ring walk, that last fight, compared to any of my other ring walks, it was, it was, it was a, I was in a different zone. It wasn't a, wasn't a pleasant zone. It was just like, ah, it's angry. Not thinking strategy, not thinking, you know, being fast, being athletic, being skillful, showing what I've got, entertaining the crowd. It was just destroy, destroy. For David Hay, it's all about mindset and, and what he's thinking coming into the ring. So last time, looking at him, it was all anger. It was all, I'm going to knock you out. It was all very apprehensive anger, rage towards me. This time it will be a much more cooler, calmer, dangerous David Hay. Him and uh, Dave Carr will know they can't get away with what they got away with the first time round. The game plan was perfect from their point of view first time round. It worked an absolute treat. It was a mastermind of a, t of a tactical display and it worked out basically exactly how both Dave Cobble and Tony Bellew predicted. I actually gave him more, more credit intelligence-wise than, than what he showed in that fight. His coach works in, in rhythm and, and, and speed and balance, so I expect that to all be better than what it was last time. Um, I expect a good, dangerous David Ayer. I'm expecting someone way better than our first fight. Someone stronger, someone who comes at me, someone who's even more evasive. All I'm doing is focus on myself. He's going to do what he's going to do. I just need to focus on me. You know, so I'm just pra I'm practicing, practicing for all different scenarios. You see, a lot of fighters, you don't really look at why or how you can actually lose. I look at him and I weigh him up and I look at, if he was looking at me, how can he beat me? What, what's he seeing? What's he, what does he think? What does he, what mistakes do he make? What mistakes does he make? So the fact is David's got some advantages in the fight and I've got some advantages and it's who's going to make their advantages work better, who's going to win the fight. So last time, it just, my, my, my advantage was to take him into the later rounds because he hadn't been in the later rounds for, I think it was the best part of two or three years. And the same thing still stands. David is, is probably the most dangerous four round heavyweight in the whole world. Do you think he looks at your strengths? He doesn't think I have any strengths. Pull the head off it, sit back, don't lean forward, and good one. Step across, fast, step across, move the head. Don't fight it, don't fight it, don't fight it. Just let it pull you, let it pull you, sit back. Don't lean forward, don't fight it, sit. Let the arm do work. Expect a clever opening. He will look for me to make a mistake on May the 5th for the first three or four rounds. And then ultimately, I will implement things that will make him work hard. And when I start doing the things that are gonna make him work hard, start blowing, that's when people will get the exchanges they want. David Hay will get stopped a lot quicker on May the 5th than he did on March the 4th the year before. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely sure of that. I'm doing everything humanly possible to make sure that uh, there is no repeat um, and there is uh, a hell of a might have revenge. Time. My best performances have been when I've been relaxed and cool and calm. When the angry guy comes out screaming and shouting, you lose. You just can't accept that I've beat him. The worst part about it this time is when I beat him on May the 5th, his actual career just ends right on the spot. It's over for him. It's Harry son.
taking this quiet, silent approach of let the boxing do the talking, but you know it's fake because he's never took this approach once in his whole career. It's going to be sweet, super sweet. I've got no interest in anything he has to say. What he says is just irrelevant. The whole tone of his voice and his mannerisms and the way he speaks, he's really good at winding people up. You haven't been humbled. You know you can't stand the sight of me. I love you, Tony You Belly. don't. I love you. You don't. I do. Turn off the camera, please. For a fighter of his calibre to be made to look so stupid like he was at times, it's pretty embarrassing, and I know that I'll stay with him. See, something special. Trust me, I'm doing everything humanly possible. Make no mistake, when that bell goes, I'll do anything to me. Sky Sports, feel it all.